Hello friends, it's Pastor Erica and I'm here through 1245 devotion for today. It's the 28th of September. So our readings for today are from Psalm 140, from the book of Esther chapter 5 verses 1 to 14, and then 1 John chapter 2 verses 18 to 25. So at another time you can take out your Bibles and read those additional scriptures I'm going to lift up Psalm 140 for us today, and uh, but I'm just going to read a part of it and, and then talk a little bit about something I learned yesterday at our Fall Theological Conference, uh, which was held for all the pastors in the Northeastern Minnesota Synod. Uh, Professor Catherine Chifferdecker was our presenter. It was all over Zoom. Uh, but uh, just a marvelous uh, immersion in the Psalms. So Psalm 140 is a prayer for deliverance from the enemy. And so it begins by just uh, crying out to God, which the Psalms do. They don't just talk, they don't talk about God, uh, they talk to God. And it's this marvelous uh, permission giving, I think, and invitation for us to do the same, that we can come to God with the fullness of our human experience, with the breadth and the depth of all that we, all that we know and all that we feel and all that we wonder about, the questions and the concerns that we might have in life. Uh, the Psalms cover it all and invite us to do the same in our relationship with God. So it starts by simply saying, uh, deliver me, O Lord, from evildoers. Protect me from those who are violent, who plan evil things in their minds, and who stir up war continually. They make their tongue sharp as a snake's, and under their lips is the venom of the vipers. Guard me, O Lord, from the hands of the wicked. Protect me from the violent who have planned my downfall. It's interesting. One of the things that I learned yesterday is other than referring to God, um, in the Psalms, the enemy is referred to most of all. Um, again, other than God, uh, there's reference to the enemy um, most often in the Psalms. And just interesting, I think, as we, uh, maybe as we all struggle to, uh, to give voice to um, our own experience of evil, our own experience or understanding of those who seem like as if they are against us um, and and working for our downfall as the psalmist says um, but it goes on then to simply say I say to the Lord you are my God give ear O Lord to the voice of my supplications this beautiful aspect of the psalm where um, we almost uh, demand uh, God to listen to us. Um, it, is, it is just a, a beautiful and honest act of faith um, that even in the midst of the things that we cannot understand, feeling um, maybe overwhelmed by the stuff of the world, uh, it's not so much that we lose faith, and, uh, but that we call out to God. And in fact, um, in our calling out, we believe that God will do something. We believe still that God is powerful and that God wills good in the world and, and will do so, uh, we hope and pray, um, in, in to make our circumstance uh, different or to make us different in the midst of a circumstance that isn't changing. Then it goes on a little bit uh, farther and starting with verse 10 or starting with verse 9, it says, Those who surround me lift up their heads. Let the mischief of their lips overwhelm them. Let burning coals fall on them. Let them be flung into pits, no more to rise. Do not let the slanderer be established in the land. Let evil speedily hunt down the violent. Sometimes the words of the psalm, psalmist are, are overwhelming to me. And... Um, they're so harsh, and they they too are so violent. Um, and yet, yesterday in our in our conference, we talked about the importance of of these psalms and and these words, uh, the cursing psalms. Uh, we talked about or the imprecatory psalms that give voice 
to our fear, that give voice to the violence of our own thinking sometimes, that give voice to the violence of the world. Again, these psalms contain the entirety of the human experience. Um, but there's something important about that. If we can pray out that hate, if we can pray out that violence, if we can, if we can kind of spew that, that ugliness of our thought to God, then we can let it go. We don't act on it. We don't have to let it affect us. We don't have to let it change us and how we respond out there in the world to those who are our enemies, to those who maybe are at work drumming up evil in this world. If we're thinking it and feeling it, the Psalms invite us to pray it out. Pray out the hate was one of the phrases that I heard yesterday at this conference. Pray out the violence. Let God, let God handle it. Don't act on it. As a person of faith, ultimately, Jesus asks us to pray for those who persecute us, to pray for that very enemy that we're having all these horrible thoughts about and then to love that enemy. Sometimes we can't get there right away, which is why it's so important to pray about it, to pray it out, to give it to God. Trust that God will be at work, maybe first and foremost in you, so that you can become a person and a presence of love in the world in the face of all that might be evil, in the face of the enemy, that God would so transform you that you could love that one for whom you are praying. I don't know uh, where your prayer life is these days, but I invite you to be honest in your prayers, to be truthful, to name anything and everything that's going on in your human experience. Name it before God. Call upon God and trust that God will hear, that God will move, that God will be God, and that you, you are in good hands. Let us pray. God, sometimes the evil of the world feels so overwhelming Sometimes the burden of hate seems too great. Help us to give it all to you. Transform us into hearts and people of love and compassion. And send us out into the world to share that love, your love, with not only our circle, our community, but with the enemy, with the evildoer, which sometimes is us, Lord. Transform us by your love. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God's peace be with you today. Have a beautiful day.